Welcome to Guitar Town. So, um, this is um, the by far the youngest guitar that you've seen on these on these videos. Um, it was built in 1989, but it's still a very very special guitar, uh, and it's kind of the last of its kind in a lot of ways. Um, this is a DeQuisto New Yorker Special. Now, Jimmy DeQuisto worked for John D'Angelico, apprenticed with him, and a lot of the D John D'Angelico's guitars that were that um, had his name on them in the latter years, and some of the very best ones were built by Jimmy DeQuisto. Sometimes the student turns out to be better than the teacher. Um, the old man's guitars are beautifully made. The fit and finish is perfect on them, and some of them sound incredible. They all sound pretty damn good. Um, but there's just something. This technology of, of carving a guitar, an archtop guitar, is old school, old world technology it's like um, it's like making a violin the top is a thick piece of spruce that starts out thick enough that it can be carved into um, a, an arch top that's basically near the same thickness as a flat top guitar um, not quite but but pretty close to that then and and um, especially when it's built by by someone um, like uh, like Jimmy DeQuisto was um, the only person I can think of that's, that 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 carves the way that he does that I know for sure uh, Steve Gilchrist and there's a few other mandolin makers and and Steve Gilchrist makes really really good guitars too he just doesn't do it as often because there's such a demand for his mandolins I have two of his mandolins an octave mandolin and, a, and an arch top guitar that he built and they're great instruments this is a big deal though it was like Jimmy started building these sort of futuristic look, looking guitars and blue ones and green ones and because uh, he wanted to make his own statement. He also, there were some innovations. He would never, he believed that metal hurt the sound. And I think he was probably right. As little as little metal as possible. They, the, the old man never would have built a guitar with a, with a you know, an ebony um, uh, like tailpiece like this. Uh, these tailpieces do fracture and they have to be replaced from time to time. And it's expensive. But they do, to me, admire drastically improved the way the Narch Top guitar sounds. Um, they um, a lot of us, and there's actually I have this bridge wasn't guitar wasn't organ. And he also made bridges that there were no metal in. They were as a system of wedges and you know pieces that fit together. So it did, there was no metal in the bridge either. I'd actually like to try to find one for this guitar and see what it, it sounds like. Uh, Detail wise, it's a, he wasn't into a lot of fancy decorations, but this is the old man says that this is a New Yorker special, which was sort of the top of the line. Of the, oh, well, for some reason, that camera is not working. I don't know why, but so I'll have to come up here and show you. Um, my rig's been giving me trouble this week, if you hadn't noticed. Um, so it's basically, you know, parallelograms, um, you know, made of pearl, and, you know, they're hand cut. And the New Yorker Special is engraved into the pearl on the headstock. And D'Angelico's um, were that way too. And this is designed after the D'Angelico guitars because Matt Umanoff ordered the guitar from Jimmy and he wanted him to build it like the old man built them. That's beautiful maple. Two pieces of beautiful maple. And that's carved too, if you think about it. It's a whole nother animal carving that super, super hard maple um, the sides are worth looking at. Um, there's that wooden tail piece. If you notice, there's some discoloration around the edges. It goes all the way around anywhere next to the binding on the sides, the backs, the heel. And it's caused by this um, kind of, some people call it binding cancer. It's just a it's a there you run into a lot of guitars made um you know during a couple of decades and that that have this um and most of them are, are, are art stop guitars and they have um uh, some, you know there's some there are some flat tops that turn up with it too if they're fancy enough they have this much binding on them but it's uh, you know i always wonder how sometimes this stuff just turns to jello uh and it's just it it was bad material and it broke down it's a form of plastic um i and i was i was in george green's shop years ago and i was talking about that phenomenon on another guitar on the gretch and he goes i said yeah you see that on, on 
set a lot of different guitars from the same period. And he said, yes, and what do they all have in common? And I sat there and trying to figure it out. And he goes, he goes, it was like a quiz show at that point. It was like, he goes, he starts giving me hints. He goes, Guild, Gretsch, D'Angelico, Epiphone, DeQuisto. And, and then it dawned on me, New York, guitars built in New York. And the supplier that made the same guy uh, made this plastic binding and supplied it to all the guitar makers in the area. And uh, there was a bunch of bad batches. And this one, this discoloration is caused by this stuff oxidizing and leaching that something kind of acidic into the wood and it discolors it. So far, this, this hasn't come apart and the guitar's been around since 1989. Some people think if you leave the case open or leave it out, it doesn't happen as much. Some people think it's a reaction with the material in the cases. I think it's just bad plastic, and some of it's worse than others, and I got lucky with this one. Uh, this, I've seen other um, Dequistos and D'Angelicos with this, especially Dequistos, with this um, this discoloration around the edges. When it's a sunburst guitar, you think it's part of the, part of the color scheme. Uh, it's almost a shame. This thing sounds like... played one of Jimmy DeQuisto's guitars. It blew my mind how open they are. This wasn't what I associated with an art shop guitar, and I never wanted one until I played it at DeQuisto. Now I have I own up several art shop guitars because I figured out what good ones are supposed to sound like. get deeper and louder if I played it more simply because that's a characteristic of arch top guitars. I hate to put a capo on this, but I kind of have to to sing the song that I want to sing. Uh, I didn't own an arch top guitar when I recorded this song, but I sort of emulated that sort of style, the sort of sock guitar on country records, which is kind of the old thing I can do with a guitar like this. This, this is way more guitar than I deserve. You, normally, great jazz players play these things. A lot of times they put pickups in them, and I'm never understand. That seems like kind of a waste. But they're great acoustic guitars, and once you stick a magnetic pickup in it, that doesn't really have that much bearing on the way the, the guitar sounds. Or maybe that's just because me, because when I play electric guitar, I play so fucking loud you wouldn't be able to hear anything that had to do with the wood anyway. But, but I recorded this on a record called El Corazon. It seems like a long time ago now, so. When I'm sad and blue And I'm feeling all there's a place that I go to that no one knows Well, no matter what I do, won't nobody put me down That's why I'm going to the other side of town on the other side of town Where the sun don't ever shine Everybody walks around With their shadow across their minds When that midnight train rolls by And they hear that lonesome sound They just hang their heads and cry the other side of town Well it isn't very far And it's not that hard to find You just follow all the other lonely souls Take a walk down Lonesome Lane Till you see the dead inside And your broken heart will tell you where to go 
to the other side of town Where the sun don't ever shine Everybody walks around With a shadow across the minds When that midnight train goes by And they hear that lonesome sound They just hang their heads and cry On the other side of town <coughs> So if you find someone who won't ever let you down Better hurry home before the sun goes down Cause no matter what you do Don't let night fall like a shroud Catch you on the other side of town on the other side of town Where the sun don't ever shine Everybody walks around With a shadow across their minds When that midnight train rolls by And they hear that lonesome sound They just hang their heads and cry on the other side of town Great guitar. Uh, by the way, on the, the video about the National um, um, Tricon, I, I said it was a style two and a half, and someone suggested that to me once, but I looked it up, and it's actually a style two. Style two and a half is not an official national delegation, but I, I some of the other guitars, I have the other three instruments in that that style and one of them i think is a two and a half maybe the mandolin but a style two and a half and that's just something collectors made up it's nothing that national did it just varies from year to year a style two and a half would have engraving on the cover that covers the resonators as well as the rest of the body so my guitar is a 1929 style two this week man way more guitar than i deserve 1989, DeQuisto, New Yorker Special. See y'all.